Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Back today with another pickup video, Sinclair Spectrum inspired, inspired by tidying up my games room. Um, yeah, literally got down to about one square foot of space on the floor. Every time I walked out a bloody door, I kicked something over. After a little while it gets a little bit annoying, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to put some of this stuff away, or at least stack it up nice and tidy. Because um, to be honest, I've got nowhere to put it, so I've got quite a lot to show you really to go through. Uh, in pickup videos. So Sinclair Spectrum is the one, I suppose, one machine which has the most pickups to show, really. It must have about 150 to 200 games to show across many different, pla many different platforms, many different uh, publishers. A lot of games are nostalgic, a lot of games I used to have, um, and some new publishing houses that I've decided to collect for. Because this game never ends, does it? And my addictive personality just wants more and more and more. Because I'm a greedy bastard. Yeah, there's always that itch you can't scratch in there, you know what I mean? I want to finish off my current set, but it's impossible. Probably something I'll never do, but yeah. There you go. So next, after the Spectrum, I've got loads of stuff for is the Amiga. I still want to do that dedicated shoot 'em up video, but I would like to get another couple of shoot 'em ups in there first before I did it. Um, Mega Drive again, I've got at least 100 Mega Drive games. I'm trying to just flesh out the Mega Drive collection again. I did cut it quite severely a couple of years ago. Nearly half my collection at one point. Well, it did halve over a space of about two or three years, but I kept all the kind of like the titles that are really hard to get. Well, so I thought just a couple of games in there that I've seen the prices absolutely rocket for. Not they're really expensive, but compared to what they used to be, they bloody are. But yeah, things like the ST, Amstrad, Commodore 64, uh, nothing really is materializing, which is great, I suppose. PlayStation 1 and 3, I've picked up a few titles again. There's uh, another video there for each system, to be honest. Yeah, besides that, it's been quite quiet. Quite quiet, he says. But yeah, it's not been that busy. I mean, the Hit Squad stuff, as you know from the Hit Squad videos, has died of death. I've just selected my next 10 for the next um, episode. Quite difficult, really. So I want to try and split it between games that I love and remember and some of those games that are bloody hard to find. So just to make it interesting. Yeah, so without further ado, we got a, an item to show you quite quickly that I was, I suppose it came to my attention by going through a website called, um, called The Games That Time Forgot. This is a, a Spectrum, I think there's a Spectrum site. It talks about a load of games that were never released on the Sinclair Spectrum, where they all went to. It's quite an interesting site, really. If you're interested, I'll leave it in the description box below. But this particular, it's a demo tape, it is. It's called Sneak Preview Tape. If you like your Batman and Cape Crusader, there's two different games on there, isn't there? Two different stories, I guess. This is kind of like, I'm not sure if this is a third story, but it is a, a game featuring Catwoman. Apparently, for some reason, they couldn't feature Catwoman in the main game, for whatever legal reason that was. But she does feature in that demo, so if you fancied, not Catwoman, but if you fancy playing that, then that's where you'll find it. I didn't know that. I thought that was quite interesting, to be honest. I do like reading those like sites... Like games that weren't all that sort of thing to find out what on earth happened to some of the games that we were hoping to see released on our favorite machines so yeah 15 games to show you um games from like the, the mid 80s up to about, about 91 i reckon the latest one was um mixture of budget full price games i used to play and love to games i've never even clapped eyes on before but yeah let's start off with uh dave retro games Play badly exclusive, and that is fast food, featuring Busy. Never played this game before making this video, but I am trying to get a full Busy subset. I think I'm one game away from it now. But yeah, again, Codemasters, that's another flipping nightmare. Those poor saps collecting full set Codemasters collections. Christ. I think the Hit Squad's bad. Codemasters is outrageous. Yeah, this game is very much like uh, Pac-Man, really. You can around finding food, picking up power-ups and avoiding the meanies. Well, the meanie in my case, I think I got about to stage three. It's about as far as I got, really. It's not a bad little game. Um, yeah, they made a few games that weren't necessarily connected to the main Dizzy game. Um, what was the other one called? Bubble Dizzy? Uh, fast Food, and I think there was one or two more that weren't necessarily Dizzy Adventures. Yeah, not a bad game. Cheap as chips. Uh, uh, some of these games I think I just kept out of bundles that I bought. Don't know why, just kept them. But yeah. Next up, 
is a Scott Brand Sega Zombie inspired game. Again, I'm not going for any of these players' premier collections, but there are a couple of games that I remember, either in the magazines or games that my friend had, like Joe Blade and Joe Blade 2. And this one is Subway Vigilante. I think it's only the three games that I got, I think, for the players' premier label. But yeah, surprisingly, because again, these published games were up to about 1992, and any games from about that year are quite tough to find. Again, this was part of a comp oh, compilation. This was part of a bundle, that's why I kept it. Um, to be honest with you, it's bloody hard. I mean, it's a bit like Renegade, I suppose. But yeah, the, the baddies never seem to disappear, so I'm not quite sure what I'm doing wrong here. No matter how many times you knock them on the floor, they, they get back up. Little bastards. But yeah, again, standalone game. This, this is not worth anything, really. But I love the title music. It's really cracking tune. But yeah, the game itself is a bit hard. Not bad for a budget game. Just tough. Now, speaking of tough, is another game I remember getting on the cover tape of a Sinclair user magazine by Vortex Software. I remember this one, and I remember Tornado Low Level. Both games were bloody hard, in my view. This one is Cyclone. Again, you have to fly your helicopter around, avoiding the cyclone, which will blow you straight off course and cause you to crash if you get too close to it. Um, you have to pick up, looks like, supply crates. I've not even seen one yet, to be honest. Uh, at the same time, you can rescue, um, I suppose, any survivors from the from the cyclone. Reminded me a bit of a game called um, Escape from Krakatoa. We used to fly across from one island to the next, pick the people up and put them back. That was quite good fun. But yeah, it's a good game. Um, but yeah, I'm not very good at it at all. Never was good at it back in the day. But yeah, nice isometric game. It's highly regarded. It's a very good game. I've just got to get a little bit better at it. Again, that one isn't that expensive. I mean, it usually goes up to about five quid, that one, surprisingly. It's not a, a tough game to get or nothing, but people do like it, don't they? And the next one is like a precursor to... Uh, what's that boxing game this boxing game's called knockout kings now this game i absolutely loved i don't think i ever won the world championship but yeah i came close barry mcguigan's world championship boxing this is the 48k variant there is a larger 128k variant which is slightly more actually it's probably a lot more difficult to get than this one um you can command about 10 15 quid because this one is again a couple of quid but yeah i, I love this game I really do. It's um, not quite a simulation as such. I mean, it is. You set your guy up. Um, you pick his kind of, I suppose, his attributes like you would in an RPG. Uh, do a bit of training and go and fight your opponent. You can either do it like a one-on-one -on -one fight. Or you can do it as, as a, as like a championship and go through all the ranks from like the twentieth, um, lowest right to the to, to being a contender. But yeah, it's a cracking game. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. I mean. The sound effects, especially when you crunch someone and actually knock them out, is brilliant. But after a little while, though, it can become bloody hard. You end up going up the rankings and dropping back down the rankings. Nothing like a true champion at all, is it, really? But, yeah, I certainly recommend that one, actually. Out of all the games I've shown you so far, this, this would be my favourite one. But, again, cheap as chips. So, yeah, a couple of nostalgic games there, a couple of games I've never played before. All right, next up... Again, a famous publishing house, Gremlin Graphics. I don't remember playing this game, actually. From the steel screenshots, it looks great. Big, massive sprites. Quite colourful backdrops. But it's a flipping crap game. That's Hercules Slayer of the Damned. Again, this was part of a bundle, like most of these games are. I've just decided to keep it. Again, from the screenshots, so you'll see the gameplay anyway. Rubbish game. It really is bad. I mean... I was trying to kill this bloody skeleton. Not that you can kill a skeleton. Maybe smash it to pieces, but yeah, I, I didn't like it at all. This is probably the weakest game I'm going to show you out of all the games I've got. But Gremlin being Gremlin, uh, a software house that I do absolutely love. They did produce some really great original games. I don't think they converted a single thing. I think everything they did was their own thing. But yeah, I wouldn't recommend it though. Certainly wouldn't buy it. If it wasn't free in a bundle, um, I probably would have moved it on personally. Right, next, next. 
This is a game of I don't really know at all. The reason I got it is because it was done or programmed by um, Jonathan Smith. Um, game by Software Projects called Hysteria. I think this was later re-released. But yeah, it, it reminded me a little bit, playability-wise, of Cobra. But yeah, same same sort of sound effects actually, the same kind of idea. Or so it seemed. But yeah, I really enjoyed this game. Didn't have a clue what I was doing, to be honest. I did it actually enjoy it. It's very smooth. Um, graphics are nice. Not in the best of conditions. It's a shame really when you see some of these creases and stuff. So I would look for an upgrade for this. It's not a bad game. But yeah, very. I'm not sure it was a very early special effects game. 1987, so may well be. Obviously special effects then tied up with Ocean Software, didn't they? Made a lot of games for them. But yeah, nice to see that. Jonathan Smith. Jonathan Smith special effects. It's worth giving it a go. I thought it was quite good. <coughs> Next is this one. Um, a game that I remember seeing in the magazines that looked absolutely fantastic, especially with the humongous, humongous sprites and a big spaceship that comes down at the beginning in the introduction screen, which is quite incredible to see that. Screenshots that I saw in magazines and all certainly were not spectrum screenshots in fact the Amstrad one looks absolutely incredible and that game is called Trantor the last stormtrooper again I've had this on the ST before but yeah it moved the character characters animation and that's fantastic and the sprite is huge the game itself is quite bland I felt I mean you, you go along different floors you got them down on the little elevator you have to activate certain terminals which release a letter but I don't know how what I'm supposed to do the flipping letter um, I got 20% through the game without actually knowing what the hell I was even doing. So maybe there's only five letters to pick up, I don't know. But yeah, it's a good it's a good game for what I've seen of it, but I can't imagine it's going to hold anyone's interest for very long. But yeah, I always wanted it, always saw it, never bought it back in the day. So great to have that in the collection for definite, even though it's quite an average game. Well, I think it got some great reviews back in the day. Right, next up we have... A very nostalgic game. Again, never had this until I got it free with a, on, not an online magazine, I keep saying that. Um, uh, a floppy disk based magazine from AST. But I always remember this particular game in CMVG. Cause I, and I always wanted it because the ST graphics looked amazing. So I thought I'd get on the Specky. Another famous software house. No mark, that's licensed to kill. Not a bad little game once you kind of suss out how to play it. But yeah. I think there's ST screenshots on the back there, but it's one of those games, again, you, if you don't persevere with it, you, you'll probably think it's crap, but after a little while, once you play it, it's great. I mean, the first level, you're, I always thought you were protecting the Jeep <laughs> on the flipping first level, but you're not. You shoot it, just blast it out of the flipping way, it'll stop shooting you, and you might get off the first level. But yeah, for some reason, I just thought that Jeep was there to, I thought, I thought you were protecting it, but clearly not. But yeah, the first level's not overly large, but you just stay on the road, avoid the um, buildings, shoot the turrets or the barns with the people in there with bloody guns, I don't know. Get to the end of the level, then you start off with another completely different, same level, but it's completely different gameplay. You're, you're then a little man who uses his scope, I guess. I think he used the joystick to move his scope to shoot the bullets in a certain direction. So that took a little while to get used to, but once you get used to that, it's actually very good. I think I can get to about level four. About as far as, far as I got. There's a one level in there I think you're chasing after a tanker or trying to avoid being rammed off the road by a tanker. I barely remember it, but yeah, it's, it's a good game, certainly recommended. Another one that's very cheap to pick up. I'll persevere with that one because it's uh, better than it first looks. Right, next up is a game that reminded me a little bit of uh, Trantor. Uh, a little bit. Again, I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it. Quite a desirable title, called The Sac Sacred Armour of Antiriad. Again, I think it's complete with this comic. This one could cost you up to about 15, 20 quid. If you're lucky, you might get it for a hell of a lot less. Again, this was part of a bundle. Uh, never really played it back in the day. Uh, like I said, come with a nice little comic book. It looks like a little bit of an arcade adventure. Pick up objects, etc, etc. The comic book's pretty cool, isn't it? I know, I know some people regard this highly. I just need to read the instructions and play it. And take it a bit more seriously, really. Yeah. 
Nice one to have in the collection. There's another one. I'll drop it all on the floor. There we go. Right, what have we got next? A couple of shoot 'em ups next. First one is. I'm pretty sure it's on the hit squad. Actually, I'm pretty certain it's on the hit squad. And that is Nemesis. Uh, a really bad shooter on Specky. It really is poor. Very, very slow paced. Screenshots from the Spectrum version. That is a load of bollocks. It looks nothing like that from what I've seen. But it's a very slow, very sluggish game. Uh, again, I kept this one as part of a bundle, but I would like to upgrade it. It's not in the best conditions. And as far as I'm aware, there are four games by Konami on the Spectrum. Uh, there's Nemesis, Salamander, Jackal, and Jailbreak, is it? I think it's four. They all come out in similar kind of livery to this. So I'd like to get all four of them. Two of them are a nightmare, though, to find. Quite difficult. It can be quite costly, especially Jackal, which I think I've seen that go for about 50 quid. But yeah, I've never played Jackal before in the arcade or at home. But yeah, Nemesis, though, is a pretty piss poor game. But the next shoot map is miles better. Brutally hard, but miles better. The graphics are great and really detailed on the Sinclair Spectrum. And that game is crosswise. Really impressed with this, even though I couldn't get very far initially. It's a bloody good game. I remember this getting reviewed in Sinclair User with another shoot em up. I can't remember what it is. I think it's the sequel to Sidewise. It was cross Crosswise and another game being reviewed. Both got really good reviews, actually. Again, this one would probably cost you between 5 and 10 quid. Quite a desirable title on the Sinclair Spectrum. Certainly would recommend it, though. But it's hard as nails. It really is. Yeah, no, really nice. I'm, I'm really pleased to have that. I got that. I think I picked up Sidewise as well. Right. Four more left. First one, TV series that I think most people of my age and generation would have watched. It was on twice a day. Every time you got home from school, even if you got home from for like having some lunch at home from school, this would be on. They were humongous, weren't they? Um, did watch it from time to time. Um, just because it was on, really, you kind of get hooked on it. But I haven't watched it for many years. And that game is called Neighbours. You've got the little title tune at the beginning. As you would expect. The game itself is crap. Really is. I recently got a bunch of games off of Sayoin. Um, I've kept a few, about 11 or 12, that I wanted for the collection. But yeah, this particular game is dreadful. I'm pretty sure you're on a skateboard going around Ramsey Street in the neighbourhood. And that's it. I think you're racing other skateboarders. <laughs> There goes the dog again. Yeah, just comes with the usual gump inside, baggy uh, instructions. But yeah, again, quite a, quite a difficult one to get. Uh, I've seen this go for about 10 to 15 quid. In the condition I got it in there, it's a little bit concave there. Um, yeah, it's all right. it's not a, it's not a good game. I think it's more nostalgic than anything else, really, just by the fact it's neighbours. Next up. Um, I suppose it's a comedy show that I never really kind of... I think it was way before my time, though, wasn't it? But I never really got the humour. That's Monty Python's Flying Circus. I mean, I saw the films at Life of Brian. That was quite funny. Jabberwocky was hilarious. Um, there's a few, weren't there, they made? But yeah, the game itself is a bit quirky. It's a bit quirky. Um, it takes a little bit of time to get used to. It's a multitude of different types of games. From a shoot 'em up to a platformer to whatever. It's got quite a lot of humour in it though, it's quite good. The Specky version is not bad at all. Played this quite a bit on the Amiga, um, but yeah, the Spectrum version holds up quite well. Again, don't come up very often this one. Don't think it's overly expensive. Again, I could do with upgrading that because it's quite scuffed. I'm gonna get barked out in a minute. I'm just waiting for it. Right, next up is Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles to coin up. Love this in the arcade. I remember playing this on Brighton Pier back on my, uh, hello, back on my um, <laughs> school trip, geography field trip. Oh, shut up. Yeah, so yeah, I remember playing that in the arcade, absolutely loved it in the arcade. Got the home version, especially on the uh, Amiga. Shut up! Speaking especially on the Amiga and ST and all, bloody terrible. Nothing like the arcade, they tried. Unfortunately, they failed miserably. She's gone. She's left me in peace. 
Let's go and give her a fuss in a minute. But yeah, massive poster inside there. Unfortunately, it's all folded up just to fit it in the box. The game itself on a specy is playable. It's all in monochrome now. Um, but it's pretty much all there. I got off on level one. Must have used about 10 continues to get off there. But yeah, I do recommend it for the Spectrum. But yeah, I mean, I played it on the Amiga. Disappointed there was no sound in the Amiga uh, or music. There was sound, but no music. So I lacked a bit of atmosphere, but played okay. I can't remember what the ST one plays like. I think the Amstrad one looks great as well. But yeah, quite happy to get that in the collection. I remember the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles coming out, the blue box one, the kind of dodgy, God knows what the hell it was all about. That was disappointing, because I initially thought that was the arcade release. She's gone downstairs now, so a bit of peace and quiet. Last, but certainly not least, the game that I had years ago in the collection, sold it, probably sold it for about a fiver. Um, knowing me, I had no idea that it's quite a valuable title. I know it is on the ST and Amiga. But there's also a Spectrum release of it. It's a shoot em up, a pretty bland one at that. This game came up on eBay. I'm pretty sure you had it up for about a £50 bike now. So I snapped it up so it can go for considerably more. And that's Darius Plus. Again, the Specky version is not any less playable than the ST version, which in itself isn't particularly great. But graphics are not bad, looks nothing like the arcade. Nothing at all. Screenshots on the back are taken from the ST anyway. Yeah, Darius Plus is superb. He lied. The graphics are nothing short of superb. A fully be weapon ship is quite a spectacular sight. And you can torch more aliens than I've had hot dinners. It's pretty addictive stuff. God, they lied as well. It's essential addictive quality shine through a considerable achievement. Don't know what they've been playing, but it certainly weren't this. Again, the specy version ain't bad. In comparison to the ST. But as a conversion, yeah, it's a bit grim. Quite desirable, very, very rarely comes up. I've never seen a uh, copy of this on floppy disk sell. I think it was 150 quid on the Facebook group. I never didn't even realize a, a plus three version existed, so yeah. Yeah, pleased to have it. And that, that, that concludes my uh, Spectrum pickup video. Yeah, loads. There's so many different games on the spec, isn't there? From the early homebrew games right through to the big arcade conversions that came out quite late on in the Specky's life. But yeah, if you're trying to collect for the Spectrum, you've got the really hard stuff to pick up from the early days, the really difficult stuff to pick up on his dying days, and you've got billions of stuff in between. But I do enjoy collecting for the Specky because it's the machine I first had. That's it, I'll start waffling. Thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for subscribing, I'll see you guys again real soon. So take care, and bye for now.